Good morning family. Trust you all are well and had a blessed week. Before I do anything, I would just like to say thank you to all who have contributed, who have donated, who have gave to the food parcels. We have a lot of people that have received and are so grateful for your giving. So we do pray that uh, God will richly bless you during this time. Today is the first Sunday of the month and we'll be partaking of communion. So if you can get your emblems of bread and wine, just symbolizing the body and the blood of Christ. Earlier this week on Wednesday night, we had a Zoom video meeting with uh, our cell group. And Uncle Bob Morris shared how important it is to remember God. How the theme of remembering God is so important and is found throughout the scripture. When we face present challenges, it is so easy to forget God and forget how good He truly is. God is good, church, and I pray that you will never forget that. That is why today, one of my song choices is, Lord, you are good. That no matter what we're going through right now, we need to remember God and uh, remember that in the beginning, when He created the heavens and the earth, and when He created you, and He created me, and He created all the animals and the trees and, and all of these things, you know what He said after each and every day? It is good. So we serve a good God and we need to realize that and remember that as we look forward in these difficult and unprecedented times. So the songs for today is Lord You Are Good and Your Presence Is Heaven To Me. Uh, I, I chose that song is just looking at Jesus as we have communion, that He is the only one that can satisfy us. He is the only one that gives us confidence in our faith that we profess and that we should be boldly declaring. So let us bow as we pray the Lord's Prayer and then get into a time of song. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's join as we sing, Lord, you are good.
you are good. Amen. God bless you, for God is good, and let His mercies endure it forever. Let's sing that song. Your presence is heaven to me. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty in this world. For nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven to me. In my weakness you are merciful Redeemer of my past and present wrong A holder of my future days to come Your presence is heaven Your presence is heaven to me. Your presence is heaven. Your presence is heaven to me. Oh, oh, oh. Your presence is heaven. For nothing in this world can satisfy and Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry and Jesus, you're the cup that won't run dry Your presence, your presence is heaven to me
presence is heaven to us and we pray that all our days on earth we will glorify you Lord and live as if we are on heaven <clears throat> I pray Lord Jesus that as we partake of the bread as we drink of the cup we will remember your suffering and the blood that you shed for forgiveness of our sins but also for healing for our bodies. I pray that uh, anybody who is sick would be healed in the name of Jesus. As they partake of that bread and drink of that cup, they will remember you and commune with you and know the reason why they serve you. We do want to lift everybody up in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you and be with you. And I'll switch over to Pastor. Amen. Hello church, here we are. You remember that last Sunday I predicted that we would be meeting at the fellowshipping at the church in Lindhurst on the 3rd of May. Well, I can assure you right now that from today I will not be predicting any further days when we will be meeting. So here we are meeting again in this format um, and we are of course meeting in homes and meeting you as an individual, wherever you might be, and we just pray God's blessing upon you. We've been thinking and praying about how and what to do. It's very difficult because it's difficult to communicate, and one of the things we are planning to do, and already a lot of people have been um, circulating the possibility of making a contribution in cash or kind towards a feeding scheme that we are wanting to bless people who will need some support at this time. And um, so there will be more details sent to you, perhaps on the website, perhaps through another media platform as to a basic outline of food things. If you can remember, the things that were put up in the front of the church, basic items, and uh, we are looking into doing that. So uh, do be in prayer for people. Uh, who are in this level of need and at the same time we are praying for you a good way to do it I find is when you actually go out to the shop to buy for yourself you just actually buy these items all at the same time today of course is um, the Sunday the first Sunday of the month where we remember the Lord's table 
and I have uh, a little biscuit in front of me. In fact, it's on a beautiful little plate that comes all the way from Israel of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with the loaves and the fishes. If you'd like to see that, it's a beautiful plate and um, I remembered that. And this little glass that I have actually comes from Jericho. It is special glass done by the Palestinian people. And uh, I've got a whole set of these glasses together with uh, bigger jugs and things like that. And it's actually something very special. So I'd like to read to you just a, a few scriptures. The first one is from Acts chapter 2. And it's from verse 46 where it says, Every day, you know, you don't have to wait for Sunday and you don't have to wait for the first day of the month or the Sunday of the month. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes. That's where you are and I am. And ate together. Two things, breaking bread and eating a meal together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those that were being saved. And then I picked up on Acts chapter 20 and verse 7. And this comes to us now as a church. We are all meeting in different locations. And uh, in a sense, we are meeting as a church. On the first day of the week, Acts 20 verse 7, we came together to break bread. And Paul is talking about the church. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking even until midnight. I can assure you I will stop before then. And then I have been struck by a very popular passage of Scripture from 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And it says in verse 23, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. Now, why it struck me was in 1 Corinthians 15 on Easter Sunday, I spoke about Paul receiving from Jesus and passing on what is of first importance. Paul was not the originator of our faith. Our faith is in Jesus Christ and his death and his resurrection. So he says, even the communion, like we are doing today, he received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever, so the whenever is actually today. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So I'm hoping that perhaps you do have a piece of bread or a biscuit and um, what you can also do if you are not prepared uh, after the service and after listening to the message, you can go back again and rerun and be prepared if that be. Otherwise, just join with us. Join with me and remember that Jesus took bread and he broke it. And uh, this is a biscuit and um, he gave thanks. And in like manner also, he took the cup. And of course, this is the blood. Remember last week we spoke about the currency of blood. A very hard message for our world. Our world always wants to deviate from the blood, always wants to deviate from the cross. But it's the currency of heaven. And afterwards he took the blood, which was the cup in front of him. And he said, as often as you do this, you proclaim the Lord's death. 
So let's just bow in a moment of prayer before I share with you in eating, in remembrance of his body, and drinking in remembrance of his life. And of course, we have just come through Easter when we can remember his death. We have just spoken about Cain and Abel and realized that it was Abel who took the better way, not because he was better or bigger or stronger. It was because he listened to his parents of what God did in Eden, where suddenly for the first time they saw death, where God himself killed an animal and he covered Adam and Eve. And that's what they told Cain and Abel. So let's give thanks today for the cup and for the bread. In your homes, you can join with me in prayer. Father, thank you for this opportunity. I pray for all those who are meeting today in front of a screen in whatever form, a small screen, a big screen, a medium screen. Maybe they're on their own and I pray that you would presence yourself with them, strengthen them because where two or three are gathered, and we know that you would be there in my name. There I am in the midst of them. And so, Father, I thank you, your Holy Spirit will be there. And so for everyone, there will be at least two. And Father, we pray for families that are joined together. We thank you for those who have maybe the broader household, people who live in their household, who have joined with them today. And we give you thanks and thank you for the death and the resurrection of our Lord Jesus. So Lord, today I take this, this bread and I eat it. Remembering what you have done for me and for each and every one for of us. At the same time, Lord, we remember this cup, that this is the currency of heaven, that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. And although we don't drink blood, we remember you with the fruit of the vine at this time and give you thanks for the forgiveness of our sins. The Lord bless you for this time. And just in a moment, you will get ready to open your Bibles and we're going to be sharing together from the Scriptures. All right, church. Uh, I trust you've enjoyed that communion time and I hope you were ready and prepared. Now we're going to turn to the scriptures and look at today's message. And we are looking at alignment for God's assignment. We are people of faith. You've seen when you go to the YouTube that uh, we are people of faith. And um, I want to tell you folks, the thing that the world does not know is faith. Uh, and I want to share this verse. I'm going to share it with you over and over again. Jesus said, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. The scripture says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Jacob. And while the world is changing, please keep your eyes on the living God who does not change. I'm going to share with you, the first reading is from Genesis and it's from Genesis chapter 5, and I'm going to be looking at verse 18. When Jared had lived 162 years, he became the father of Enoch. After he became the father of Enoch, Jared lived 800 years and had sons and daughters. Altogether, Jared lived a total of 962 years, and then he died. When Enoch had lived 65 years, he became the father of Methuselah. And after he became the father of Methuselah, Enoch walked faithfully with God 300 years and had other sons and daughters. Altogether, Enoch lived a total of 365 years. Enoch walked faithfully with God. And when he was no more, notice all it says, when he was no more, because God took him away. Now, while you are turning with me in the book of Hebrews and chapter 11, I'm just reaching over to my PowerPoint just to show to you I was ready for Sunday and uh, I've just printed out the first page and we are looking at 
Hebrews chapter 11 and we are looking at verse, verses 5 and 6. By faith, remember the book of Hebrews 11, every single person begins by faith, by faith, by faith. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. Scripture simply says, he could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended. This is what I'm speaking about today. As one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Now, let me come back again to my PowerPoint. And this was the front page. And you will see that I have Moses on this side. And I have a picture of Elijah on this side over here. And all I have for Enoch is footprints in the snow. And maybe that could be a, a title for today's message. Footprints through life. Footprints in the snow. While I was thinking about this, and I've had a lot of time to think in this lockdown, lockdown time, I've been going through some old papers and going through uh, some of my files and I, for today, I thought about an old television program, which some of the older members in the church will remember. Younger people won't remember this. Called FBI, The Untold Stories. And if you can remember that series, it was, every series was basically about somebody who disappeared. And I thought to myself, how true it is that we have these three characters in the Bible. Uh, we have Moses. Uh, we know that he died. The scripture says that he died. We know that the people mourned his death. But the scripture distinctly says nobody knew where he was buried. Now that's very interesting because I've actually been to the land of Jordan, right down to the city of Petra. That is a city built out of rock. And near to there is a celebrated tomb, painted white, across the mountain range. And if you look carefully with binoculars, the tomb of the brother of Moses, who was Aaron. And um, this was a, is a very interesting thing in that this is how he was remembered. Now... If we look at Moses and we look at Elijah, uh, we then look at Enoch. And of course, Elijah went up in a fiery chariot. And of course, Enoch, uh, Genesis 5.25 simply says, Enoch walked with God and then he was no more. Do you know what the key was to his life? He walked with God and he chose to please God by faith. Very little is said about him. And the scripture goes on to actually talk about people like this and say, even though he is dead, yet he still speaks. And there are a lot of people like that. I've used this at a number of funerals over the years where people, even though they have passed on and are being buried, their lives still speak as a form of witness to uh, the lives of, of, uh, of faith. Now, you might be asking the question today, so what does it mean to please God? And what does it mean to have faith like this? Well, the thing that I want to share with you today is that our assignment for all of us, and you will notice how similar the assignment is for Cain and Abel. It was to come to uh, a belief in the sacrifice that Christ was to bring. The second one is exactly the same. The assignment that we have this time is for all of us, young, old, doesn't matter where you are, where you are sitting at this moment. Our assignment is to walk with God by faith. 
So you might be asking the question, what does it mean to walk with God? And how can we actually do this? And the first thing I want to share with you is to ensure that you let faith permeate all of your life. Let faith permeate all of your life. Now remember, there is a big historical challenge here. This is pre-flood. You've got the creation, and then you've got everything going along, and then you've got the next big event, which is the event of the flood. And the reason I say that is because the scripture says that Enoch lived to 365 years. Now, how do we explain this when, in fact, the Bible says later that we will be given three score and ten, which is 70, and by grace we will be given 80 years? Let me just throw it out for some of you. How do we answer this? Number one, one of the ways you can answer this is that the years were calibrated differently. We don't know what calibration. They didn't have a calendar like you and I have. And uh, that's one explanation. Another explanation is what there's, that the environment pre-flood was so different that in fact people lived very much longer lives. Remember that when the flood actually did come, it rained for the first time. The earth was almost like a capsule of liquid and, and um, almost like clouds. And it was covered in a very, very different environment. Anyway, that will tickle the fancy for some of you Bible students. Because then we get to some other people in the scriptures. And we get to people like Methuselah. And it talks about him living to 969 years. Just imagine. So these are very, very interesting times. However, let's get back to Enoch. It says he walked with God for at least 300 of his 365 years. I don't know why it says it like this, because... The information in these early chapters is very scant. It does say that after the birth of his son, Methuselah, he walked with God for 300 years. So maybe it was because of this that in fact he walked with God and he maybe through the birth of his son, seeing the miracle of the birth, and I'm sure those of you who've had a child and you start to see some of the resemblances of yourself and your wife and so on, you are absolutely overwhelmed. And it says in Genesis 5 and verse 22, And after he became the father of Methuselah, he walked with God for 300 years and had other sons and daughters. I'm not sure exactly what happened, but uh, I'm just assuming something like that. But friends, the point is with Enoch, the thing about him is that faith permeated all of his life. I remember hearing the story which still moves me when I think about it. A pastor was at a church and uh, some of the family members invited him for lunch. Him and his wife went for lunch and they followed the family's motor car and they got to the house where they had the lunch and uh, they went into the place where the table was laid and grace was said and uh, plates were handed out and um, the pastor put one and two one and one together and thought to himself i wonder who prepared the meal because these people were at church with us and with me Anyway, he ate the meal very gratefully, and at the end of the meal, he stood up and he said, Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for this lovely meal. I would just like to know who prepared the meal. Of course, the husband and wife said, Well, look, we just did a bit of preparation, but our house help lady, she actually cooked the meal. And he said, Well, could I meet her, please? And the husband and wife looked at each other and they called the house help from the kitchen and she came in and the pastor said, could you bring me a basin and some water 
and a towel. Of course, now the family were agitated and they were around the table wondering what on earth was going to happen and the wife ran to the kitchen, brought it a little basin with some water and a towel and he asked the house elf lady just to sit on a chair and he knelt at her feet and washed her feet and simply said, I want to thank you for what you have done. I want to tell you something, friends. When that happens, faith permeates all of your life. There's another story, and I know you're going to hear a lot of faith stories because I'm going to go back through a lot of history. I've told you some missionary stories. And there was another story of uh, a Roman Catholic young man who they only know him to this day. They only know him as Brother Lawrence. Anyway, he was tired of the, um, uh, the life of, of working um, in his normal job and going about his normal duties. And they said, one day he said to himself, I would rather go and stay in a monastery. It was a time when in Europe monasteries were popular and you would be screened and tested. And when he got there, they asked him why. And he said he wanted to know God and he wanted to pray and he wanted to study the traditions of the Word of God. And they sat down and eventually they accepted him and uh, they showed him his little simple room. He was to sleep virtually on a, a, a blanket on the floor and very, very stark conditions. And uh, he said, so when do I start praying? And they said, no, no, no. We've assigned you to the kitchen. To the kitchen. To do what in the kitchen? Well, we are so many people in this monastery. There are monks here. There are, there are uh, different uh, elders and leaders. And uh, uh, you are going to be the potato peeler. He was downcast and he got to the kitchen, he looked around and he said to himself, I've come to pray, I've come to seek God. And he began to peel the potatoes and he eventually wrote a book. And this little book is in a little pamphlet form and it is read by millions of people to this day. And he said, even in the kitchen, even peeling potatoes, I learned to practice the presence of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. Day unto day speaks. So friends, what I'm saying to you, wherever you are, whatever conditions you be in this time, learn to practice the presence of God. That was a life that was pleasing to God when it came to Enoch. The second thing I want to recommend to you is let faith point you to eternity. There are two very significant verses. Genesis 5.24 Enoch walked with God and then he was no more because God took him away. Hebrews 11 verse 5 By faith Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. When faith permeates your whole life it doesn't matter whether you're on this earth or in the next. The blur and the tension between my life now and that life then, actually that blur gets taken away completely. Listen to what the Apostle Paul said. Paul said in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 23, he said, I'm actually torn between the two. I desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is by far better. But then he goes on in verse 24, but it is more necessary for you that I remain in this body. Now, I have to tell you something, that that is a huge challenge. Rather than cling to this world, let us always be ready, absent from this body, present with, this law, on, with the Lord. Think of the man on the cross, the thief on the cross. Remember me when you come. Today, you'll be with me 
in paragraphs. The blur between the one and the other is taken away. I was uh, a number of years ago down at a city church down at one of the cities on the coast and uh, right near to the church and near to where we stayed was a very um, well-known school. In fact, there are twin schools. Gray High School and then you've got a similar one in Bloemfontein called Gray College. They are very big rugby sport rival schools. They have a 25th celebration of old boys who come to the school. Now you can imagine leaving school 25 years and what you have with this school, it is a, a government school but a very expensive government school. There are a lot of extras, so you can almost call it a private school. Very traditional, huge buildings, beautiful rugby fields and everything that goes with it. Anyway, it came to this year, the 25th L of Celebration. The celebrations last for four days. Some of the guys drink all four days. They asked me to speak at the chapel, to do the chapel service. And I want to say to you, if you were asked to speak at a chapel service like that, all you've got packed at the back of the school, at the back of the hall and in the gallery are a lot of successful business professional people who have come back to celebrate. Many of them bring money and all that goes with it. And in front of you, you've got all the junior school, you've got the high school and you've got a traditional hall packed to capacity. What would you preach on? Anyway, I was deeply challenged. And let me tell you what I preached on. I preached on a very simple message. The key to life is to live properly and to die meaningfully. And I spoke about the Apostle Paul for me to, to live his Christ and to die his game. And when I spoke about to live properly, a lot of them were joking. I could hear some of them were still drunk from the night before, they were making comments. And when I came to the to the, 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 the sermon and I spoke for about five minutes on the importance of life is to die meaningfully, that place went absolutely quiet. You could in fact have dropped a pin and heard it at that time. But friends, that's what it's all about. To be focused on eternity, not just on life. A life that is pleasing to God is one that is living for God and in God's presence. The third thing I want to share with you is let faith be a priority. It's in the context of Enoch that the following statement is made in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who follow him. I can only assume that this is how Enoch pleased God. First, he pleased God intellectually. Anyone who comes to God must believe that God exists. And that's where the Bible begins. The Bible does not begin with a theory about creation. It begins with a belief of creation. It is a faith statement. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It doesn't argue. It starts as a faith statement. And I would appeal to you to think of something like this from Psalm 14 verse 1. The fool says, have you ever seen this? Not in his head, but in his heart. Because the fool is governed by an emotional presupposition. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. They are corrupt. Their deeds are vile. There is no one who does good. 
Friends, it is very important that intellectually today, going through these very difficult times, a pandemic, I've heard scientists, I've heard politicians, I've heard medical people, I've heard top leaders, I've heard people across Europe, America, across, and the same statement is said again and again. Never has there been a pandemic like this. So if you're feeling uneasy, let me tell you, you are in uncharted territory. Never before. So what you need to do is intellectually say, I'm the same yesterday, today, forever. You need to say, I'm the God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob. That is an intellectual statement. Be absolutely firm in what you believe. This leads to experiential or experimental applying of what you believe intellectually. So, if anyone comes to God, you must believe that God exists. You must also believe that God rewards those. That's very interesting. He rewards you who earnestly seek Him. I don't know how He's going to reward you. But He's going to reward your life as a testimony to your family and friends. He's going to reward your giving uh, and blessing of other people. He's going to reward your praying for other people. He's going to reward you praying for those in authority over us at this time. I don't know what it is, but He is going to reward you. Think of what Jesus said in Matthew 16, 31, for example. So do not worry saying, what shall we eat? What shall we drink? What shall we wear? Those are the three basic necessities. This is what it says in verse 33. Instead of worrying, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these things will be given to you. Now in a practical way, when Jesus sent out the disciples and he sent out the 70, you know what he said to them? Don't take anything with you, but from sharing your gospel, from touching the lives, from being bringing healing into other people's lives, those people will look after you. Seek first the kingdom. Seek first righteousness. And you'll be rewarded in some way or another. How? I do not know. Seek to please God. And you can only do it by faith. I want to close with a, a poem. We don't often read poems today. But this is a poem by somebody by the name of Danson Smith. Entitled, Thou Remainest. And let me read it to you. Yes, he walked with God. Could grander words be written of anyone? Not much of what he thought or said is told. Not where or what he wrought is ever mentioned. He walked with God. Brief words of fadeless gold. How many souls have walked on this journey? Helped by his words or prayers. We may not know. Still this we read words of excelling grandeur. He walked with God, while yet he walked below. Let's just bow in a moment of prayer. Father, I pray that as we bow in prayer, and maybe meet with others at this time in prayer, if we have people with us, I pray, Lord, that we might promise to walk with you. It's our assignment, and we want to align ourselves to that assignment today. And as we walk with you, everything else will fit into place. So Lord, we commit each other to you, we commit our prayer times, we commit our loved ones to you, and we do this together in Jesus' name. Amen.